Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and I'm going to start out with one of my favorite handles, the Black Swan Capitalist. Listen, they had Andy Sheckman, who's from Miles Franklin, who is one of my sponsors. As you listen to him, remember, Miles Franklin Precious Metals, code DAI Gold. You can email info at milesfranklin.com or call 952-929-7006 for the best pricing. That's all in the description of this video that there will be a marriage between blockchain technology and yep. gold. Mm. And the only thing that I'm not sure of, you don't say. and I'll, I'll give you my take to yours, you said one to one. I don't, the only way it goes one to one is if they put gold at a really high price. Um, yes. 20,000, 50,000, 50, whatever. 50,000 dollar gold. Would be to use blockchain technology to show the immutability and the veracity of what is there what each country pe pegged to the system and maybe say 20 percent of every new currency unit has gold backing and have it audited mm -hmm. third party independently create a, that there a gold backed stable coin on the xrp ledger would work check this out jim rickards is not buying it and now it's here to stay even though this week he said it was topping out but basically he's embraced bitcoin so my question is in 2024 has jim rickards changed his stance on bitcoin the answer is no. Um, <laughs> why, uh, why am I not surprised? Well, look, when you say it's here to stay, gambling is here to stay. You know, they gambled during the French Revolution and they gambled in 19th century London and you can go to Las Vegas or Atlantic City today. So gambling is here to stay. It's a um, it's not a particularly productive activity. It costs people more than they make, uh, but it's a form of entertainment. So I think of Bitcoin as a form of entertainment. Uh, it, well, but, well, put it this way. You go into a casino, I think of Bitcoin as a casino chip. Okay, so you go into a casino, you put $1,000 down the roulette table, Coupier gives you $1,000 worth of chips. You gamble, you could make money or lose money. When you're done, you pick up your chips, you go to the cashier and you get dollars and you go outside. So in other words, in the world of crypto, you can buy and sell Bitcoin all day long and you can calculate dollar profits, but if you want your profits, you have to sell it, get your dollars out of that world and go back out on the street. But the Bitcoin itself has no value outside the casino. Like if I if I walk out of the casino with the chips in my pocket and try to buy a cup of coffee with the chips, you can't do it. I mean, maybe somebody will help you out, but, but basically you got to convert back to dollars. So, so Bitcoin are chips in the casino. You can gamble, have fun, kind of entertainment, make money, lose money. Most people lose money, actually. Some people have made a lot, it's true. So what do you say when people say, well, you have to convert gold back to dollars? No, you don't. Just keep the gold. I don't. I don't convert gold to dollars. I like the. Uh, you have the gold for the day when the dollar's not worth anything. That's why you have the gold, and everyone's going to be saying, "Get me some gold." Oh yeah. So that's number one. Number two. Um, tell me the use case for Bitcoin. I mean, there is no use case there is as no a use case. as He's a right. form of speculation, as a form of gambling. Yeah, it's the chip in the casino. I grant that. Got a use I case, but when people tell me, "Oh, Jim, you're technophobic. You don't understand." I, I read, I read Nakamoto's paper in 2009 when it came out. Okay, I've been in big. I've been in. Gold. Ooh, how did he get access? He just happened to be there and knew instantly, right? This is a guy that was with the CIA. Point to basis 2010. I never yes. lost, I didn't by the way. So I get it. I get here. the technology. I get the math. Uh, but I also understand monetary economics, and there is no use case for Bitcoin except. For entertainment? For entertainment. It's for entertainment purposes only. See, here's what, you know, while the Max Kaisers of the world are uh, out here, they think that they're doing victory laps. Um, Chad Steingraver called him out correctly and said, BlackRock owns you now. The Bitcoin people are doing victory laps. I don't think what they, I think they don't realize what just happened. And what just happened is Wall Street has just positioned themselves to be able to control Bitcoin at their will. Wall Street did what Wall Street does best. It took a risky asset and made a market. It subsumed Bitcoin into the system before Bitcoin could build its own system. Oh. And now it's also reaping the rewards. Here's our Kate Rooney. 
to one of the sneaky, kind of under the radar winners in this whole ETF story, Bitcoin ETF story, and Bitcoin on, ETF story is actually the, the Wall Street thing. Bank. So they're what so are long. known as the authorized participants. They're sometimes called the Heard APs. You've got names like JP Morgan, Jane Street, well, look, Jane Hannah Street. Fitzgerald. On this look, JP Morgan of ETHGATE fame and Jane Street of Sam Bankman Freed fame. That's where he worked before he started FTX, just by coincidence of the trading desks who are behind the scenes. They're creating and redeeming shares. But as part of that, they're basically picking up the breadcrumbs. They're taking a slice of each transaction. If there's a lot of volume going into these Bitcoin ETFs, which has been the case in the last few trading days, they're the ones really winning on the back end. And the irony, even some of Bitcoin's biggest critics will end up the biggest winners of the ETFs. The banks, especially JP Morgan and their trading desks, are going to make some money on this. All right. And then we have this. SEC just opens comment period on NASDAQ proposal that would allow options trading on BlackRock spot Bitcoin ETF. Ramp up the control. Now, look, this guy's from the CEO of uh, CIO of Bitwise. He's talking about that Bitcoin ETF Super Bowl ad or the potential of one. I have to ask, you know, I have to ask, you know, there's going to be a marketing blitz uh, from you and the other ETF issuers. Are you planning a Super Bowl ad or anything like that? <laughs> I love that idea. I don't know if we're quite uh, the size to do a Super Bowl ad, but we'll we'll see how flows go. I, I think it's possible you'll see some from the crypto industry. There is going to be a, a, an intense marketing war. The reason for that is this is an opportunity measured in the tens of billions of dollars, in my view. And so uh, when you have that kind of addressable market for these ETFs, you're going to see people fighting for their share. Bitwise hopes to get our share as well. I don't know if that means a Super Bowl ad, but you can expect us to be live in the market for sure. All right. Then we had Monica Long shows up to the party, the president of Ripple. Listen to what she has to say. You know, there's when when crypto hits crypto summer, it's hot and everyone wants to be a part of this industry. And I definitely have noticed in this latest winter, um, even the the pitch decks from uh, different developers that we used to see, uh, you know, maybe back in uh, 2022 that were all about Web3, they now flip to AI <laughs> as the headline of what they're selling. Right. Um, it might be so, coming back now. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so don't don't be the sheep that uh, follows the herd in uh, the times of winter. You could you could see that. It, I guess my my advice is to um, to lean into the future. Um, I know that right now, regulatory climate. Where's the U.S. going to fall? Uh, you know, is the ETF going to get approved? Like. Where does the world stand on crypto blockchain? Also, frankly, just in the wake of some of the big headlines around Binance and FTX, there's this kind of cloud over the industry. Um, but, uh, you know, with taking on risk comes great reward. And I think mm-hmm. that, oh, yes. you know, from a purpose standpoint, being a part of building this future is really meaningful. All right. Um, then we had. Somebody caught Brad Garlinghouse having a cup of coffee out in the cold in Davos. The theme of rebuilding trust is paramount, and I think that applies to crypto as well. Last year was a year with a lot of headwinds, some self-inflicted wounds. But I think as we rebuild trust with the ecosystem, with the major players, I think uh, the future is extremely bright. 2024 is going to be marked with uh, the, the reversion to kind of core first principles, recognizing that compliance in crypto in all financial services is very important. And I think to build that trust and to really scale into the opportunity that crypto represents, we have to have that compliance first mentality. The primary thing I'm looking forward to in Davos is staying warm. Uh, it's, it's definitely a cold year, a little more snow than previous years. Wait, that's not possible. Klaus Schwab and, his fr- and John Kerry told us that global warming is just, everything's getting hot. That's not possible. It's colder. Davos always, I think, uh, stimulates ideas. I'm mostly thinking about the crypto industry and Ripple specifically, but certainly what's going on on a geopolitical basis and with climate are front and center here in Davos, which is obviously very important. Okay. Um, Then we got this. Ripple has filed its response opposing the SEC's motion to compel. Uh, I'm not going to get real into this. Uh, I I didn't see anything too exciting from it. Um, we'll see. 
All right, um, we're going to go into DAIXRP, and what we're going to do is we're going to talk. We're going to really drill down on the evil that's afoot. But here's the. We're going to also talk talk about the. Well, this right here to me, they say World Economic Forum Davos Davos 2024 bombshell. We're going to start here. We're going to show you pure evil, and we're gonna, then we're going to show you that. Because what I've been asking all these years, the last five years, is where are the freaking good guys? Well, I'm going to show you what the good guys are up to, that there are good guys, and that everybody is not buying into all this BS. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe. Hit the like button. Tell your friends and family that I do not buy into all this BS, and I'm going to show you. You're going to look down the black hole of pure evil. Then we're going to pull our heads out in DAIXRP.com, and then we're going to show you the good people, the good guys. Here's pure evil. <laughs>